This video will look at Walsh diagrams in polyatomic bonding, which tell us the energies of various molecular orbitals versus the bond angle in the molecule. So we'll start off by looking at two test cases. We have BEH2, beryllium hydride, which has a 180 degree bond angle, and water, which has at a 104.5 degree bond angle. So this BEH2 is linear, it's what we describe in the next chapter in, in symmetry and group theory as being a d-infinity h-point group, and water having a bent structure and a c2v point group. So the question is, why is water bent whereas BEH2 is linear? And we'd answer that in general chemistry by saying that water has two lone pairs. So it's the Vesper theory that those lone pairs want to be apart from things, so they push the uh, two covalent bonds away from the lone pairs and thus closer together. But if the qualitative idea of Vesper theory is any indication, then the more uh, advanced idea of molecular orbital theory should give us the same kind of insights and, a, and another uh, deeper reason for why that is the case. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, so in BH2, we have uh, two electrons in core orbitals in the 1s orbital of beryllium, as we do in water as well. And then in the valence shell, we have six, uh, sorry, the valence shell, we have four more electrons, two that are from beryllium and one each from the hydrogens. These are both going to be bonding, uh, bonding orbitals, forming the two covalent bonds here, and they're both in the valence shell. But water's valence shell has more electrons. We have uh, from the oxygen, six more electrons and one from each of the hydrogens, giving us eight valence electrons. Two of those are going to be bonding, forming the sigma bonds between the H and the O, and two of them are going to be non-bonding orbitals. So if we look at a diagram of what all these orbitals look like, in the linear case, we have the uh, constructive overlap of all the S orbitals, the two sigma G orbital, we have the uh, constructive overlap of 2pz and the 2s orbitals, two, which is the 2 sigma u orbital, both of those being occupied. So the Aufbau principles starting at the lowest energy orbitals working our way up. Then the 2px and 2py, just as we said in the video on uh, sp hybridization, those are going to be non-bonding orbitals. They're perpendicular to the axis of bonding here, so they're not going to interact. Those remain at the same energy that they started out with, 1 pi u orbitals. Then we have um, the then we have the destructive overlap of the 2s and the 1s orbitals, 3 sigma g star, and the destructive overlap of 2pz and the 1s orbitals, 3 sigma u star. All right, the same kind of the same kind of orbitals in water uh, go by different labels. These labels are from the irreducible representations in the C2V point group. That's all stuff that's taught about in the next chapter on symmetry and group theory. But let's not worry about that now. Just focus on the general kind of what these orbitals look like and how many electrons we have to fill them. So same thing here. Uh, the 2A1 is the con constructive overlap of all the S orbitals. Uh, 1b2 constructive overlap of 2pz and all of our uh, 1s orbitals. 3a1 is now the constructive overlap of the 2px and the 1s orbitals. Uh, 2py still being perpendicular to the plane of the molecule, forming the 1b1 non-bonding orbital there. Then we have uh, 4a1 star and 2b2 star, the non-bonding analogs from 3 sigma g star and 3 sigma u star. So what we can do over here is plot those, uh, plot the energy of each orbital versus the angle of the bond in the molecule, going from 90 degrees here to 180 degrees over here, qualitatively uh, measuring these all, of course. Okay, so as we bend the molecule, um, these two orbitals, which were uh, very stable and the overlap was very good, the overlap becomes less strong as we go here. So 2 sigma g is still pretty good, but it gets a little bit less stable as we bend the molecule, going up in energy. 1b2 gets even worse, going up even quicker as we bend the molecule. Um, 
the 1 pi u, one of them starts to become a bonding orbital going down in energy. One of them remains orthogonal, staying up at its uh, reference non-bonding state. 3 sigma g star uh, goes up as well. In this case, uh, 3 sigma u star going up in energy as well. For, beryl for BEH2, there's only two of these that are occupied orbitals. So they're lowest in energy at 180 degrees here. So it makes most sense for the molecule to be lowest in energy when the bond angle is 180 degrees. So that makes sense from our Walsh diagram here. For water, we have the extra complication that now the 1 pi u is occupied as well. So this orbital is going down in energy as we get our bend bigger and bigger, and these two are going up. So the optimal bond angle that we end up with depends on where's the Where's the overlap here? Where's the minimum minimization of energy versus bond angle as this one is going down and these two are going up? I, this isn't, of course, drawn to scale, but that happens to be at 104.5 degrees where we get the minimum overall energy where the decrease in energy from this uh, 3A1 orbital is equal and opposite to the increase from the 2A1 and 1B2 orbitals. So looking at how orbitals change their energy versus the angle of the molecule can give us an idea for why some molecules have certain shapes and other molecules have different shapes. And the general name for this kind of plot of the orbital energy diagram versus some type of molecular structure parameter like a bond angle is called the Walsh diagram.